Hello, BookTube, and welcome back to a series of videos in which I am reading you a book. On this Easter Sunday, we are reading the Gospel according to St. Luke, my favorite of the Gospels, and we are up to chapter 8 in the King James translation. And it came to pass afterwards that he went throughout every city and village, preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And the twelve were with him, and certain women, which had been healed of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary called Magdalene, out of whom seven went seven devils, and Joanna, the son of Chusa, Herod's steward, and Susanna, and many others, which ministered unto him of their substance. Uh, the wife of the chief minister of Herod is one of these followers, and they minister out of their substance, meaning they're, bill they're bankrolling this whole thing. Fascinating. And not anything we've had ex in this kind of explicit detail before. So is this written for them? Are they noticing this? Uh, and when much people were gathered together, there were come to him out of every city. He spoke by a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away, because it lacked moisture. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked it. And others fell on good ground, and sprang up, and bore fruit an hundredfold. And when he said these things, he cried, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And his disciples asked him, saying, What might this parable be? And he said, Unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not understand. Now the parable is this, The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are those that hear, and that then cometh the devil, and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, for which for a while believe, and in time to temptation fall away. And that which fell among thorns are they which, when they have heard, go forth, and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life, and bring no fruit to perfection. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Uh, to which I will respond the same way I did when we saw this in earlier Gospels. Two things mainly. One, ground is not sentient. So if that's your parable, this is a bad parable. Ground has no choice. Rocky ground can't choose to be anything other than rocky. Thorns can't choose to be anything other than thorns. When you describe that, you are describing an inept sower. A sower who is intentionally throwing seed onto rocks is an inept sower. That is the only reading of this parable. It is not that, you know, if only my heart were open to the gospel. No, because rocks and thorns and soil aren't sentient. Uh, and Two, the other observation here is the same one I've made before, which is here Jesus is explicitly telling his disciples that he is talking in parables to the general public, specifically so that they will not understand him. Which would be obvious anyway in the implication of let him who has ears to hear, let him hear. Well, that's not an explanation. <laughs> that's not, he's standing in front of a crowd and saying, you know, if you know, you know, is not an explanation. Uh, and aren't you here to do that? Aren't you here to explicate the word of God, the kingdom of heaven? Uh, but we move on. Uh, no man, when he hath lighted a candle, covereth it with a vessel, or putteth it under a bed, but setteth it on a candlestick, that they which enter may see the light. For nothing is secret, yet shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid, nor shall be not be known, and come abroad. Take heed, therefore, how ye hear, for whosoever hath, to him shall be given, and whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. Again, I, I, the last thing I want to do is carp on this of all days, but that is fundamentally unjust. That those who have will get more, and those who have who have not will have even what little they think they have taken from them. I know you're supposed to read it as a metaphor for the arrogance of faith, uh, but it it isn't put that way. It isn't put explicitly. Uh, then came to him his mother and his brethren, and could not come at him for the press, that is, for the crowd of people. Uh, and it was told him by certain which said, Thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to see thee. And he answered and said unto them, My mother and my brethren are these which hear the word of God and do it. 
Okay. You're still keeping your ma waiting, and that's not good. <laughs> You'd think, as a good, upstanding Irish lad, you would know that. <laughs> uh, now it came to pass on a certain day that he went to his ship with his disciples, and he said unto them, Let us go over to the other side of the lake. And they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep, and there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. And they came to him and awoke him, saying, Master, Master, we perish. Then he arose and rebuked the wind and the raging of the water, and they ceased, and there was calm. And he said unto them, Where is your faith? And they, being afraid, wondered, saying one to another, What manner of man is this? For he commandeth even the wind and the water, and they obey him. And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to land, there met him out of the city a certain man, which had devils long time, and wore no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him, and with a loud voice said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God most high? I beseech thee, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man, for oftentimes it, it caught him. It had caught him, and he had kept bound in chain, with chains and in fetters, which he broke the bands, and was driven the devil into the wilderness. Uh, an, an odd and, frankly, ugly and stupid interpreta interpolation that I, I do not believe came from the same hand as the author of most of this gospel. It's not just that uh, my reading is bad, it's that it's also garbled gobbledygook in parentheses. Uh, and Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And there was there a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. And they went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. When they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. Then they went out to see what was done, and came to Jesus, and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. They also, which saw it, told by that means he had possessed the devil, was healed. Uh, then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadarenes round about besought him to depart from them, for they were taken with great fear. And he went up into the ship and returned back again. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might also be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and show how great things God hath done to thee. And he went his way, and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for it. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, who was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house, for he had only one daughter at about twelve years ago, about twelve years of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him, and a woman having issue of blood twelve years, which had spent all of her living upon physicians, could not be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood staunched, and Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and thou sayest, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody hath touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him, and she declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Let's just press on to the end. I'll give you a few comments here. Uh, while he yet spoke, there cometh one out of the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her. And he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleepeth. Uh, and they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded uh, to give her meat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them that they should tell no man what he had done. So here on Easter Sunday, we get a resurrection. We get Jesus raising uh, Jairus' daughter from the dead. 
there are odd details here and there scattered throughout. First of all, who are the people who go with him? Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the girl. And yet we're told that when he tells them, not the crowd this time, but in this gospel, them, when he tells them in a private room that she's not dead, they laugh at him. That doesn't seem right, right? Peter and James and John would certainly not laugh at Jesus, especially after they've just seen him command the weather. Um, but it's a, it's a, a resurrection. It's one of the discrete resurrections that Luke gives us. Always very interesting and always presaging the, the main resurrection to come. Uh, I, I, of course, have my quibbles with a lot of this stuff. I, naturally, the, Gabber, the Gadarene swine has always bothered me. The, the thing you're supposed to take, one of the things you're supposed to take from that story is that, as we've mentioned before, supernatural beings know Jesus. They know who he is. They don't need to be convinced. Uh, they, don't, they aren't going to doubt. They know that he is a divine being with superpowers. It's interesting that they, that they ask him when they see him if he's come to torment them. That hints at a past. That hints at, at previous activity that we don't know anything about. What was Jesus doing? If he was, he's now incarnate as a man. But what was he doing for the uncounted millennia before he, he became a man on earth? Uh, what is his past relationship with all of these supernatural beings who recognize him on sight, even though he's in a human body? Uh, but naturally, I object to the story. The, the spirits that are in the Gadarene swine, they actually present the possibility, we, we don't want you to banish us into the deep, into the water. What about those pigs instead? The pigs are completely innocent. And, and yet, A, for some reason Jesus gives them their preference. Why would he do that? Why would he give them their preference? And what are they doing in the pigs? If they're in the pig, if they're in, uh, the, if they're in this man, this possessed man, well, they had to enter him at some point. It wasn't always like this. So do they have the ability to come and go from their host body at will? And if they do, then why do they need Jesus' permission? Why wouldn't they go where they want? Uh, but also, once they get into those pigs, which they seem to prefer to the deep, they then drown themselves. Why do they do that? Or does Jesus make them do that? It's all very unclear. I think this, this is another example of a set of stories that made sense in their original context and that we have lost since the context. Uh, a big book, a 90-page book on the miraculous deeds of Jesus, or something like that, that maybe was in circulation but that we don't have anymore, don't even have an echo of it anymore, because some later denomination decided that it didn't like the way that book splitted its semicolons and destroyed every copy and every person who owned the copy. Uh, I, I I don't know if that would explain it, but it doesn't seem to make sense on its own. Also, that business about, I mean, we if we go back to his explanation for the parable of the sower, we're told that that uh, one of the bad patches of ground that is sowed indicates people who have a willing heart, they receive the seeds of the kingdom of heaven, and those seeds are taken away from them by supernatural beings against their will. I've pointed out a few times when we talk about these Gospels that that doesn't seem fair at all. <laughs> that doesn't seem fair to me, if that is the case. It's all a little bit supernatural vague. Uh, but perhaps the most intriguing supernatural element here, the most intriguing science fiction element, if you will, is that bit about the woman with the well, plagued with an issue of blood who touches the hem of Jesus' garment intending to be cured. And Jesus feels energy go out of him. And he doesn't know who did it. He, he, he doesn't immediately know who has touched him with that aim in mind. The, the disciples have to point out to him, there are people touching you all around. You're being jostled into a gigantic crowd. How can you ask who touched you? How could we, Everybody's touching you, is basically what they're saying. But wouldn't the people in that crowd largely be touching Jesus because they know he's a healer? Why would she be the only one? who touched him with the hope that the touch would heal her. And if she wasn't the only one, well, then wouldn't he be feeling energy go out of him all the time? And what does that mean? That I felt virtue go out of me. I, that I have a set amount of it, and I felt someone take some of it. What does that mean? That, that feels strange. That, that doesn't feel like it fits with the rest of the gospel. It, uh, 
it bespeaks, uh, I don't want to use a charged word, but it bespeaks a mythology, an undergirding mythology that, about which we know almost nothing. Uh, a lot of this, this chapter does. Uh, but, uh, un unplanned by me, it does appropriately end with a resurrection. With a little girl who was dead, Jesus, uh, Luke, uh, skips the, the other language. He, he, uh, he skips the Talitha Kumi and just tells us, just gives us, you know, the straight up in the straight language, you know, arise because you are alive. Very interesting. Uh, this will be fodder later on. We've seen it already. I'm sure it will be echoed in Luke. We'll find it echoed all over in Luke of scoffers saying, well, he raised other people from the dead. Why can't he raise himself from the dead? We've in Luke now seen him raise a couple of people from the dead. Uh, so we'll, we'll move on next time as we press on the gospel according to Luke. We're going to do Luke and then Acts uh, to finish out this part of our read-through of the gospels. So, sorry for the delays here, but I'll hope to get back on track. And in the meantime, of course, I hope you all have a happy Easter. Uh, so I'll wrap this up for now, uh, but I'll be back. Thank you, book two.